suspicious activity. Um, that has been my constant message throughout <coughs> my tenure in the position I'm in right now as, as a police inspector. That is a message I'll continue to push. And it's what I'm going to leave here today telling you if you see anything that you think is suspicious, that it doesn't sit right with you, and you feel that there is a crime or something developing, you need to be contacting the police. I'll leave it to you to decide whether it's a 999 call, if you think it's a theme zone, uh, as in someone's about to commit a burglary, someone's about to buying up the car, that, that will be down to yourself and how you feel that, that those circumstances uh, are developing. So, yeah, unprecedented. Response police officers out on bikes. It was really effective. Um, they then got promoted into the neighbourhood, which was fantastic news for me. I now had a team that I could focus on this issue. But I've taken it beyond that. I've gone across the division. In isolation, as a South Neighbourhood team, we can only achieve so much. This is a whole divisional problem, it's a force wide problem. So what we did a few, uh, last year was we aligned response officers to neighbourhood areas. And what that did was when the police officers had, a, had downtime, which isn't very often these days, I can assure you, because of the level of demand that the police are faced with right now. But when the police officers had downtime, rather than them randomly selecting their own area to patrol, they had a default area. So every area had a default police officer who would go to those areas and spend whatever time they've got available patrolling that area. That um, achieved, um, yeah, for me that was a success because things did go down and we did get some feedback from the community that we're starting to see police officers. I've then taken that stage further, which begins this week. We've carried out some analysis with our force of, um, analysts have a look at this division's hotspot areas for um, burglary. Now, I'm not going to tell you where those hotspots are because I don't want the criminals to find out. It wouldn't be uh, quite the success I'm hoping it's going to be. But what we're going to be doing is we're going to be sending police officers during the time range, the window of time that we think that these burglaries are, being, are occurring and we're going to send them in for a certain amount of time and what we're going to be doing is stopping anything, you know, if legislation fits and intelligence fits, we're going to be stopping people, stopping cars, checking, uh, checking movements in the night, we're also still pushing, working with our OCB colleagues, our uh, communications colleagues, people on the radios, taking the calls. Uh, Trafford, we are leading the way when it comes to responding to suspicious circumstances. What's the point of me telling the public to report anything suspicious if we are not giving it our 100% um, effort to get to those uh, areas to, to find this person who are giving somebody cause to be concerned. So these are the things that we have in place to try and um, address these issues that are giving you cause for concern. Now over the last two weeks alone we've had a number of these responses to suspicious, act suspicious activity and two people have been arrested as a result of this early responding. One person was signed with a knife in his bag, another person, I think it was a balaclava or a crowbar, and both were arrested. And this is because people are aware of this message of responding to suspicious, uh, reporting suspicious activity and giving us this chance to respond early to get to this individual before a crime is committed. Give us a an opportunity to engage with this person, find out what we're doing. Um, uh, another message I'm trying to uh, push around burglary 
I discussed this last time with uh, Raheel and uh, everybody who was there. Having said that, I've walked up to the car park today and not seen one steering wheel. So, th this um, is not um, advertising this type of steering wheel. The steering wheel here is just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. Now, this here. Well, I'll ask you the question. You were the burglar, which car? No which, one car which car are you going to take? <coughs> right. uh, you think, it's, is it the car we're looking after? Well, actually, no. The point is, if, a, if somebody walks past this car, first of all, they've got to get into the house to get to the keys. Because cars are so technolog technologically advanced these days, they need the keys. Hence the problem that we have today. This is a delay. It's time that when you're reporting to the police suspicious activity, and believe me, we get plenty of calls from neighbours who are seeing this sort of thing occurring, it gives us time to get there and do what we need to do. But, however, up to now, and it was the case last time I spoke to him many months ago, I still do not know of one car stolen in modern times that had a steering wheel on it. Just that sort of thing. <laughs> Just that sort of thing. You know, um, so as a visible deterrent, it's not around the car. We want to prevent them entering your home. And that there, I believe can do just that. That is the delay. They want to be in the car, they want to be gone. So please consider this as we go forward, because this is a very good modern day concern. Just around the, you'll be aware of the um, list of robbery series, the Rolex robbery series in um, Hale. For as long as I was a police officer, I've always known that Hale drew a certain type of defender because of its makeup and it, it, it takes up a lot of my day talking about Hale. I have a dedicated team who are committed to trying to address these issues. It's a wonderful place, it's a wonderful community. Get all this sort of togetherness going on. And I believe that together we can make a difference with this. So what, what we set out to do, um, my PCSOs and my officers, uh, I think it was well, just before the start of summer, started working with the hospitality and businesses in the area. And what we've been trying to do is educate them as to what constitutes suspicious activity. Since then, we've had some excellent results. When the businesses are identifying what constitutes suspicious activity, they are making contact with the police in the way that we're advising them to do that. We are intervening, and that's resulted in one arrest, and um, he's in prison at the moment, thanks to that early intervention. It's, it's a constant message that we're trying to push out to the public. I welcome opportunities like this because the problem I have is reach. There are lots of communities. So we're about to hear about um, Home Watch and we're about to hear. There are other communities within Hale. I think there are many, many communities in Hale. And the problem I have is reach. It's trying to get out this message, these messages that I'm telling you about today. Uh, is the issue. So uh, these are some of the things that we are doing. We never stop um, looking, <coughs> analysing, looking at the statistics and seeing what we can do differently. We never stop changing and adapting the way we approach these things. And you rest assured, rest assured if you take nothing else away from here today, you have a committed team. You now have a committed Chief Constable and a committed Greater Manchester Police that hopefully within the next six to 12 months you are going to see a tremendous difference about the way we deal with burglary and um, the way we support victims through the ball. Any questions for me?
or two questions from there, Madam Chief. So of those 300, roughly how many do we know are actually likely to go on to try to turn the front line onto the, the, the beat? And the second follow-up on that, if I may, is that those that are on the beat, what sort of percentage of time are they actually out on patrol as opposed to the mission to the duties? <coughs> Not as much as uh, not as much time as we'd like, um, you know. If to to, and I first joined the police um, fifteen year, odd years ago. You would lock an offender up in the morning, or sometimes through the day, and that would take you the whole shift. Placing today is a, is, is more demanding than it used to be back then. These police officers are, um, the amount of paperwork does consume a great deal of their time. Um, it, I can't deny that, I'm not going to lie to you. What's the percentage? I don't know, is there, I can't give you a percentage, I've, I've never actually... More or less than half? Yes, yeah, they'll spend an awful lot of time in the police station, one arrest or one crime, the amount of paperwork and detail that is required is, um, it does take up a lot of this of time. But uh, your first question was the... The, the 300 new one it has and when they can come, yeah. how many will actually go onto the beat? They all come onto the beat initially. Um, for the first six months of their, their career, they'll be going onto the front lines. Um, some are coming through the police now system, which uh, they they the, um, the problem solvers. They go straight into neighbourhoods. I've got some police you now students who come straight to us. And they're um, the critical thinkers. They're the ones who come in straight away uh, to you know neighbourhood is all about demand reduction. It's all about looking at the problem and figuring out ways through the place people. Uh, environment, whatever it is that we can do to try and reduce that demand um, is, is what the police know students do. The, the, the ones who come through the traditional route, coming through Central Park, through training, they go straight onto the response teams. Um, they do a variety of things within that six months. They'll go into a prisoner processing unit where they'll learn to build files, um, interview suspects. The, the, the role of a police officer in, in Britain is so diverse. Um, you know, the, gosh, could take all day just talking about um, the responsibilities that a police officer has. But for the first six months, there will be frontline police officers um, of, of all guys or a little bit negative. Um, can I just interject? Uh, can we take one more question? I mean, we've got plenty of opportunity at the end for QA because I'm conscious that we have a few more presentations to get past. <coughs> Yeah, um, you say you're concentrating on burglary, but is that to the detriment of car thefts? No. Well, at the moment, the, the, the kind of we've got we've got two profiles at the moment. I think they're pretty much across um, across this certainly this division. Mm -hmm. um, we've, we've got the opportunist burglar, and we've the reason why I'm asking is our next door neighbour, direct that next door neighbour, had his I think it was a forty thousand pound Audi stolen off his drive. Now the police didn't call that at all. They weren't interested, they just gave him a crime number. Now had they come round, you know, they would have seen that they looked at our house and stuff, you know, we've got three or four cameras on the front of our house. You know, I would have thought perhaps the police could have come round and asked us whether we had anything recorded. Can I ask how long ago this was? Eighteen months to two years. Uh, right, I, I can't talk about no, specifics of that. Now, yeah. now, yeah. and again, this is because of the new policy that this police constable, uh, chief constable, is this is doing with the 18,000 unreported crimes. No, 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 it's got nothing to do with it. It's got nothing to do with it. There are, listen, there are a lot of problems yeah. within Greater Manchester Police, but there is also a lot of problems. You know, we we focus on the, the biggest problem I have in the neighbourhood is trying to get the message out of the good that we do. Um, there's so much negativity that goes on around policing. When you read it in newspapers and 
you know, it frustrates me a little bit because believe me, they, these police officers are working very, very hard yeah, sure. at, at, at trying to, you know, no one joins the police not wanting to deal with burglary. Yeah. In fact, that, most of us will dream of it. If you know, one reason why you join the police is to catch a burglar. These days, every burglary will now get a response that you're talking about, that you expect. And there is an expectation as well. With a burglary, your response to a burglary, you cocoon. And therefore, there's a lot of research gone into cocooning and uh, the houses at the rear, the houses to the side, this is where you pick up evidence, this is where you know, uh, there are likely to be witnesses. Um, so there is a science behind that. And all this now is being standardised across Greater Manchester Police because this is the policy that the, this Chief Constable is bringing in. doesn't want to see this. Um, initiatives like I'm running will be supported by these measures that the Chief Constable will bring in. Don't get me wrong, <coughs> I'm saying to, to inspect the cross and so to stop what you're doing. You know, I, this is exactly, these are the, exactly the building what I need to be able to uh, make my policies effective. So that experience will not happen today. Every burglary now is getting a police officer. I mean, Many moons ago, many months ago, in Berlin, Simon is probably our most effective um, burglary uh, spock on the uh, on the team, and he's been to so many. But that was because the policy allowed that. Mm -hmm. Should should it? It's questionable. But now the new uh, policy across this force is that police officers will attend and will. That's good. Uh, make these, you know, do these, make the investigation and the inquiries that, that uh, we failed to do in the past. So hopefully this will improve. In fact, I know it will improve. Thank you. Sweet. Thank you so much, Adam. Thank you so much. For your